Hey everybody, welcome to Haywood RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us we have a virtually new, which is uh, fancy sales talk for still technically used, <laughs> um, Thorpe Chateau 31 EV, which uh, I always wonder like, what do those letters stand for? I'm thinking this one means that it can move everybody because this is a bunk model, but this is actually my preferred type of bunk model because it's one big giant mega slide all on the driver's side of the RV, which leaves this side of the RV wide open for just pure unadulterated patio space. I think it's it's a lot more park friendly. You get more use out of your space because the total width of the coach isn't quite so wide. The slide doesn't eat up into any of your body space. It's only got like 1,100 miles. There's only 11 hours on the generator. So you're, my first question, when I see this is, as I go, okay, why didn't they want it? What's wrong with it? Turns out there's nothing wrong with it. The folks had plans to travel all over, uh, but they found a place they liked very, very quickly and went, let's get a seasonal site. And then they looked around and went, uh, well, we don't actually need a bunk model because it's mostly just the two of us. They had plans on family traveling that didn't plan out. So they swapped into a travel trailer with a big, nice rear kitchen that was more conducive to destination use. So you're getting something here that is virtually new, again, technically used, but you still get the balance of the, the Ford factory warranty on things like the uh, the drivetrain and the motor, the three or 36 mile balance, or 30, <laughs> no, 36,000 mile balance. So there's still some good peace of mind in here. Holy cow, I've talked for a minute and a half. Let's get inside there, I'm sorry. I tell you, I really, I like the color palette in here. I like these nice kind of creamy light tones. It makes everything look and feel more wide open. Then again, these big opposing windows on either side here where you've got this uh, mega slide and all your seating, that is just a really classic motorized thing that always works for me because whenever you get those opposing windows and opposing seating, you get not only awesome views, you get awesome airflow, lots of natural organic light, and it's a very social seating arrangement because this is, I think, a family model or at least a guest-friendly model, and you want to chit-chat with one another. And this does that very well. And by the way, there's there's seat belts all through this uh, seating. They're just kind of tucked down in there. Oh, you know what? I'm a person who I like. I like to consume a large amount of liquid. I'm always drinking glass of water, glass of something or other. Having a cup holder nearby like that, that's something that I really like. And that's that's kind of my message on this one. Overall, this is a beautiful, very smart coach. It has a couple features on it, though, that make me go, really? That's what they didn't do? But the more that I thought about it, those are not significant. They're not game-changing, camp-stopping features. They're just kind of like, huh, that's weird. So I think what they did here is this is this brand really is a coach focused on okay we're gonna spend the money you, you know you're, you're buying something with that the stuff you're gonna use every day it's all done really well like i like this dream dinette that can fold up and down easily into a sleeper i like how all the countertops are a sealed edge press membrane we'll get back to the kitchen in just a second we'll see all this storage open as well naturally we're completely carpetless and ventless flooring like a lot of motorized but that's a very nice thing i always like to point out our overhead, uh, you know, bunk here, like most class C's, it folds into that extra sleeping space, which once again, I mean, between this, the master bed and the bunks, you can sleep a bunch of people in here. There's also the little headboard storage pockets. And like you see up here, a couple cup holders. That is something that as a little kid, I definitely would have benefited from because I was a little kid before a lot of those non-spill cups existed. Huh, I was, I was a mess. Now that TV can totally like fold back against the wall, by the way, which is kind of cool for evening viewing. Um, if you, you have people sleeping in the master bed, you want to put a little show on up here for the little kids and put them to sleep, you can do that. You might have noticed there's a ladder for that. There's also a curtain to totally close off this um, cab area so that people aren't looking through your windshield and while you're like eating, which, you know, ugh, that's that's weird, you know. We're on that Ford E450 chassis. We're carpetless up front. And I love that there's no big giant ankle breaker step of death down here. Anytime you're in the E series chassis, it's definitely a little tight for people with long legs like me. I find it's much easier to go in and out of the passenger door over there on the side than try to squeeze through the middle here. But you sit your butt down, you twist your legs around, you know, you can you can make it happen. It's it's really not all that bad. And this actually, they still use the um, the factory rear view mirror right here because you've got a, a rear view camera below you. 
But this is actually kind of ha uh, handy if you hear the kids screaming bloody murder. You can look up at a glance and you can ask your co-pilot, hey, can you go back there and parent this thing so I don't crash us into a bridge? So if you're the co-pilot and you got to get up, this is kind of what you see. Obviously, the slide's open right now. We will see the slide closed. Uh, before we go outside, I'll show you how everything looks and works in travel mode. So just hang with me real quick there. But I'll tell you what. Uh, I've seen a lot of these various bunkhouse class C's. I think this one has the best kitchen of any of them I've seen. There's a lot of storage, especially overhead here. They didn't waste opportunities, and there's more behind us that we haven't seen yet. But that adjustable shelf in that cabinet right there, so that you've got some uh, some space for some bigger, taller stuff like cereal boxes or pitchers. You know, if you're down south, you need to make some sweet tea. I know that being north of the Mason-Dixon line, I don't exactly have the best understanding of what sweet tea is. I just know that it is delicious because it's pretty much made the same way that I make my Kool-Aid. You put so much sugar in it, you can almost chew it. And that is exactly the correct way. <laughs> Big pots and pan space. Because it doesn't have a traditional oven, you might have noticed that convection microwave up top, which uh, more common in motorized than towable. I wish more towable RVs would adopt something like this. But again, you can see that this just not used, ladies and gentlemen. And now that I've seen this cooktop, I'm very con confused as to why it is not used more widely in the RV business. I think this is awesome. This is the best of both worlds. You've got a true induction cooktop on the left, which requires 110 power, which you get from a park or a built-in generator like this has that we're running right now. But you've still got a pair of burners. It's not one or the other, it's both. And that's brilliant, and I don't get why it's not more common. As long as we're looking at storage, just a couple little handy drawers over here for the kids. And I tell you what, one of those, oh man, absolutely, positively needs to be dedicated just to socks for the kids. I do not understand how kids do this, but uh, they can shed socks when you're camping like a snake sheds skin. And you're like, uh, kiddo, where'd, where'd your socks go? They're like, hm, I don't know. Like, what do you mean you don't know? They don't know. They really don't. Now these extra large doors... They put some really nice, strong struts on because it is a big door. They wanted to make sure that long term that stayed working and it's double strutted. It's awesome. I mean, little stuff like this, too. A coat closet right by the door. And again, full admission. This piece of trim right here is just kind of bowed out a little bit. I believe that is largely due to the fact that this RV is cold currently. I believe that when that warms up, it would flatten out. Chances are a couple staples or a little bit of glue or something could get that held back in place. I don't love stuff like that, but I'm not going to just gloss by it and I'm not going to lie about it not being there. Also, we've seen great storage, but still a dedicated pantry over here next to this eight cubic foot two-way fridge. And down below the fridge, there's like a little, it's not a full on shoe garage, but a little flip flop slot, which is kind of cool. And again, full admission, at the time of this filming, that handle broke and the previous owner actually full on said that was totally my fault. It worked just fine from the factory. I was having a bad day. I cracked that thing open real hard to grab myself a PBR and uh, unfortunately I broke it. The replacement part for that door handle is already on its way. You can consider that basically not an issue because that is getting handled at no additional charge for you and uh, before the RV leaves us basically. Now the general living room is seven foot tall there is about a three or four inch little step there as you go back into the upper bedroom and bathroom kind of deck that allowed them to do some good storage and some, some things with the chassis basically without really affecting the function of this, I, I think whatsoever. And you've got dual uh, pass through kind of hallways right here, which is very nice at nighttime. You can keep the master bedroom doors closed and then you can use the bedroom door over here to slip in and out without ever walking past the bunk people or walking into the living room and potentially disturbing the kids because, you know, I swear, man, once, if they wake up at night, they're never going to sleep well again for the rest of the night. Then everyone's going to have kind of a bad, grumpy day tomorrow. Great leg room, good headroom in the shower over here. Again, the lighter colors making everything look good. I'm a fan of this coach. This is, this is really sharp over here. And you see that big black box with the red button on the right hand side? That's not the self-destruct button. This has a tankless water heater system so that if you want to take a bunch of back-to-back -back showers because you got a whole bunch of people in here, you can do that. Very handy if you got to get up and hit the road early tomorrow. Now that slide continues all the way back here into the bedroom. So all of this closet and dresser space that we're looking at, this is kind of all off the floor plan and it is that big time storage that I think you're going to need for a family. Because what's nice is, we've remember, we've got a couple dresser drawers over in the bunk area. 
but you've also got like seven more, three of which are oversized over here. Not to mention, this is where you're basically going to find the bulk of your hanging storage space. Now, some people, they, they say, hey, when I'm camping, I don't need hanging storage. That's not a priority for me. So you could always convert that into shelving space. Um, some people are gonna look at the same, you know, that's not quite enough hanging storage space for me. Everyone seems to vary a little bit on that. I think, again, being a family model, you're probably going to be looking at more folded clothing storage. So even though that's, you feel for the number of people this could sleep, only one closet, it's still probably enough to get you through the weekend. Now, like I said, uh, if I see something, I'll say something. And there's a couple little aspects of this RV from the factory level that just kind of made me go, huh, why did they do it that way? Like this trim piece back here for that radius corner. That's a hard thing for manufacturers to trim out sometimes. It just, I would have liked it if they just did something to mask those screw heads a little better. And like, I noticed that there's one screw head over here missing. It's not a structural issue. It's it's just a piece of trim to help got, mask some wiring is my estimation. I'm not exactly sure what might be behind it because I didn't want to pull it down, obviously. And then there's just a couple little things like the, the, the ceiling cabin lights are in one switch. All of the other lights are individually clicked. And that just kind of made me go, huh, like there's no more light switches in this. But I don't know, at the same time, is that stopping me from camping? No. Is it allowing me to enjoy some other enhanced features uh, through the RV? Yeah, so, I mean, in that respect, I guess I kind of get it. I do think, though, this is super CPAP friendly. You've got big stands with power outlets on both sides of the bed, and that's a nice little touch right there. Now entering travel mode. And just to kind of give you the reference again, starting from the position of that co-pilot seat, because uh, you know, if you're going down the road, you got to stand up to get something. This is probably the angle and the view that you're going to get. Now, the difference really between a motorized and a towable vacation is that in a motorized RV, your vacation starts the moment you turn the key. It's a road trip, baby. So you have to be able to get through here. Now it is a little tight, but if you stop overnight and you can't deploy the slide, you can still kind of cough and crawl into the bunks. It's enough that if you really had to, you could do it. And then you're actually going to use the bathroom door to snake past that hallway to get back here to the bedroom. Now this does need to be a shorter camp queen so that when the uh, slide closes, the bed doesn't crush the uh, cabinetry basically. I suppose you could put a longer bed in there, but it would need to be some kind of folding mattress. Or what you could do is get a spacer block, like a big block of foam, that when you reach your destination, you scoot this down, put a spacer block up in there, and then voila, you have yourself a nice longer bed. Or I guess the proper way to say it is voila. Man, once again, we are looking just virtually new all the way around here. The skin is gleaming. It's not old enough to have really absorbed enough weather. Here's a funny thing. So um, I, I mentioned how I, I prefer this style of bunk model. Right next to us right there, that's a Fleetwood Jamboree, also a bunk model. But it's a more traditional setup that has a slide over here on the door side with the bunks and like a bedroom closet. I prefer the chateau that we're looking at because it doesn't have that door side slide kind of cutting into our awning space, our patio space, our family space. It's, it's all over here in that big door side kind of mega slide. It's out of the way and it just it just it feels like a more effective uh function to me now we're on a ford e450 chassis the tires look just brand spanking new that's got a, a vortec v10 engine on it because again there's only 1100 miles on these sneakers they haven't had blowouts they haven't had a regular wear or anything like that the skin is still just absolutely gleaming here uh, remember again, our own in 4,000 generator, only 11.4 hours at the time of this filming. It was 11.3. I ran it for a little bit just to make sure everything was running fine. Fired right up like a champ. I want to get you through the storage I can down here and apologies if my camera works a little worse than normal. It's hard when I'm this tall to duck under a slide to show you around right here, but that is actually something I wanted to point out. It's under the slide, which means that's a little tricky to get to, but they made the baggage doors flip down. So you don't also have to fight a baggage door when you're down here, probably using one hand to post yourself up for stability purposes. You know what I mean? Another little, this is an, these are ABS uh, plastic molded compartments, by the way. So God forbid you had to, if you needed to lightly run some water in there to clean something out, you could. And I want to back up just a second because it's a regular, but on, on a RV like this where the whole side 
is a slide. I think it makes a lot of sense. You've got a door side, uh, or a driver side rather, camp shower here on the face of the slide, not like down under the skirt where it's hard to get to. And that, by the way, is a tankless on-demand water heater. So if you do have a bunch of people or you're cooking up a storm, you need to take a couple back-to-back -back showers, nobody has to take a cold shower, which is a, a nice little thing. All enclosed sewer station here, black tank flush and everything all kind of all right there. It is a detachable power cord, which I prefer for security purposes. And I like how they put that baggage compartment right next to the power hookup. So you have an easy place to put that power cord because you know, big old lug of copper, that stuff, you know, it gets heavy pretty quickly. And check out that, that just mega slide, full protection awning over that thing. That is awesome right there. Another thing that's doing for you is the, the tops of the slide boxes are not as thick as the, the roof of the RV itself. Well, that means that the top of the slide box doesn't have quite as much insulation by just by thickness. So having that big uh, mega slide awning right there is actually going to help uh, the RV maintain uh, more even temperatures. Now with the way that they have this hitch set up, if you look at this, it says it's an 8,000 pound hitch, but the way that the hitch attaches to the chassis is rated for about 5,000 pounds. My understanding is that if you uh, use a uh, external weight distribution system like you might use on a travel trailer, you can bump that up to about the 7,500 pound range. That seems to vary a little bit from brand to brand, but uh, what I'm locating on this one, that appears to pretty much be the case. Now, kind of like there's a few things inside like the click lights that just sort of baffled me given how nice this is overall. I was, uh, well, I mean, baffled is really the word. There's manual rear stabilizer jacks back here. It's very unconventional in today's market. Seeing that really kind of threw me for a loop. I looked at it, I'm like, is that aftermarket? Did they do that? And, I, and it looks to be factory work. I'm not a chateau dealer. So little details like that sometimes escape me. But the more I got looking at this, the more it kind of made sense. You've got those tires all the way up front for stability. You got middle tires for stability. Well, you've got, you know, your bedroom all the way in the back. And if somebody's moving around this coach, they can shake the thing around. So those rear jacks are basically just to take the, the, the wiggle jiggle out of this thing as the kids move around the campsite. Now this big baggage door, initially I was uh, afraid was gonna just flap in the wind, but it actually has a friction hinge on it because that's a big sail. Otherwise on a windy day, you don't want that ripping off there. Now, if it's super, super gusty, definitely keep a hand on it. But unless it's super, super gusty, it's really not going anywhere because you actually have to, you know, get pretty firm with it to get it to do anything. Now, this is storage basically under the headboard of the RV, uh, of the bed, as it were. Um, and I mean, that's a nice chunk of space. That is really good for if you have folding picnic tables, if you have big bag chairs, if you've got like a, a small grill or something, a portable solar panel, like there's all kinds of different good little things you can do with that. Again, I want to give you a look at all the outside storage on a Class C, you know, uh, unlike a class A, you don't always have as much skirt space for all of that. So every little ounce of storage counts big time. And that's exactly where I, I saw these two right here. And this is almost, it just feels like pure bonus storage space that very few uh, class C motorhomes in this size have. I was kind of looking at it and there's a part of me that says, I really wish they would have extended that patio awning behind that baggage door. But I, I can imagine that an awning that big would pose a problem itself because you gotta remember, not exactly the smallest coach. That is some pretty good awning coverage right there. And of course it does have LED lighting. And yeah, absolutely no surprise up here. The uh, roof looks virtually new because, you know, it is virtually new. I just wanted you folks to get to see, you know, this is, this is not the cheapest purchase you could make in your life. And I like to take the extra time and effort to really show you every detail I can here, especially care maintenance and upkeep items on used RVs, because that really seems to be the biggest concern factor I I've noticed over the years. And I know that if I was spending this kind of money, I'd want to make sure the seals look fine on the roof. And yeah, thankfully everything does. Another thing I'll tell you, this is also smart. Like I said, this is a smart coach. I, I really respect what they did here. It's not a brand we carry. It's, it's a brand that I really respect. This is sharp. I understand why somebody would buy this instead of something we carry. I see the appeal. But uh, the, the smart features like the, uh, the white shrouds on all these roof fixtures, 
especially that air conditioner. A white shroud won't soak up as much heat. It just helps the air conditioner operate more effectively. And one tiny little point of consideration and caution, with this being a very solid laminated walk-on roof, that means that the air conditioning ducting is actually run through the laminated roofing, which means there are a few spots that are slightly thinner. Most of the time, you can just walk up here, no sweat. Occasionally, if you do take a step and you should be walking slow up here anyway, not in a hurry, you might feel some one part a little softer under your foot. Just don't step there and step like six inches to the right or left. I've walked all over it. I felt a couple of those spots. You're not gonna bust it or anything like that. Just be careful, be smart, and you're gonna be a lot happier in the long run. So what do you think of her, guys? Like I said, there's a couple things that I look at it, like the rear manual jacks, and I go, you know, why, why that? But overall, the things you're gonna really need, use, see, feel, touch on every trip, they're all here. It's nice, it's sharp, it's in great shape. I can't find any significant blemishes, dings, anything like that. It, it looks pretty good. I think that if you're looking to, to do some traveling around, especially if you're gonna have some extra bodies with you, either regularly or even just on occasion, this is a sharp, sharp fit. And man, saving you a mint compared to the brand new market right now. So if that sounds good, when you're ready, we're ready. Although, hopefully this one's still ready for you. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy Halo Camping, everyone.